We had three major accidents on Sunday, the 4th of September. The third accident that occurred is the loss of Kenneth Mueller and Richard Conte and a beach baron here near Sacramento, California. Here's what we know so far. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio Channel. From the Aviation Safety Network, Beach Baron 58 model, owner-operator, HJNL Air LLC, registration November 142, Delta Romeo. This is a late model, Baron, I believe about a 1986 model. Two fatalities, two occupants. Northwest of Galt, while maneuvering, training, departure airport was the Tracy Municipal Airport. A Beechcraft 58 Baron crashed in an orchard northwest of Galt, Sacramento, California. The two occupants were fatally injured between about 8.39 and 8.40. It descended from its apparent cruise altitude of 4,700 feet MSL to impact 21 feet MSL. That's <coughs> very low terrain down there uh, near Sacramento while reversing course in a radius of about 250 feet. In other words, spin, stall spin. Note, radar returns of this flight are similar to common flight training scenario that would include 360 degree turns right, left, continuing on with power on, power off stalls, engine out maneuvers, emergency descents, and so forth. These maneuvers are generally performed over unpopulated areas referred to as practice areas. Investigation is ongoing. The two pilots on board, Kenneth Mueller was the CFO, Chief Financial Officer of Rayleigh's, a local, very popular supermarket chain. Together, Kenneth and Richard own this Beach Baron along with several other employee uh, executives from Rayleigh's. Richard Conte was a well-known, well-respected, very, very busy DPE or Designated Pilot Examiner, FAA Designated Pilot Examiner, who has recently given check rides to several people, including a uh, summer intern, Kellen Bodine. The Baron, the aircraft, November 142 Delta Romeo, is a 1985 Beach Baron and was a beautiful airplane. And a couple of things of note, according to this last uh, ad, this did have the big engines, the 550 Continental engines, the IO550C engines, as opposed to, I think, originally stock were the IO520 series of engines. And also in this picture note, they do have VGs, Vortex generators on the wing, which helps reduce stall speed and uh, VMCA. And I don't see any VGs on the vertical tail. More on that in a moment. Dual yokes, glass cockpit, just a very well equipped Beach Baron, late model. According to the FlightAware data for 142 Delta Romeo, we can see that this does appear to be a training flight departing from Tracy and then coming into the practice area at 4,600 feet and practicing some steep turns, losing a little speed in that turn, gaining a little speed in this turn. So I assume with Conti being the DPE, he was either giving instruction or possibly a check ride to Mr. Mueller. So I assume Mueller would be in the left seat and Conti in the right seat as his usual role as either instructor or designated pilot examiner. Then the airspeed drops off as they maintain altitude all the way down to 110, correction, the ground speed drops off to 110 miles an hour. And as they maintain altitude of 4,800 feet, they regain altitude and speed, maintain altitude, and then practice another slow speed event and then the data drops off again here at about 110 miles an hour ground speed from an altitude of 4,500 feet. Looking at the overhead picture of the wreckage here in Catherine's report, we can glean a lot of information. From this picture, it looks like we've got all four corners of the aircraft, though I can't quite make out the left elevator and stabilizer from this particular view. I assume it's still attached to the aircraft back here and covered in possibly in vegetation. And it appears that this is a classic flat spin or spin rotating to the left and impacting the terrain. When the, when the aircraft impacts the terrain slightly nose down, slightly left wing low, that part of the aircraft 
impacts the terrain, stops moving, and the tail whips around or scorpions around into this bent shape, indicating a left spinning impact. Also, too, you can see compression of the left wing back here, wrinkling, indicating compression of the left wing and compression of the right wing, also indicating a left spinning impact. Not much vegetation disturbed except for right around here. I assume maybe this is where it, the aircraft first pancaked right in here and then spun around to the left. We can't tell much of the condition of the propellers from this picture. Now the controls, um, it's hard to tell about the controls after the impact. Were they upset by the impact or were these the control inputs at the time of impact? That's hard to tell. But if the aircraft's spinning to the left, he's got right rudder trying to stop the spin. But here he's got full up elevator. Again, we don't know if this is a result of the crash or if this was the uh, position of the controls during at the point of impact. But as you know, full up elevator, that's natural human reaction when you're coming close to the ground to pull the elevator up. But if you're in a spin, you need that elevator down. You need it to, to regain control of the aircraft. We also see that the right aileron is up in an effort. And again, we can't tell if this is as a result of the wreck or was the control input at the time, but that if you've got the right aileron up, you're trying to counteract the spin to the left by turning the aircraft to the right. But in a spin, ailerons only exacerbate the problem. You need to keep the ailerons neutral in a spin. A shot from a different angle basically shows that very little vegetation was disturbed. All this, of course, is from the response vehicles, but the aircraft came down just darn near vertically and in a relatively flat position. From the beach Baron POH, the Baron is a normal category aircraft. Aerobatic maneuvers, including spins, are prohibited. And here's why. If you get many of these light twins, including the Baron, into a spin and don't get it recovered within the first quarter turn or so, these spins can tend to flatten out and be nearly impossible to recover from. You simply do not have enough rudder authority to overcome the fact that you have so much center of mass located outside of the center of rotation. With the two engines of a light twin and the fuel out here in the wings, that's a lot of mass outside of the center of rotation that once you get it rotating, it's very hard to stop. That being said, one of the maneuvers that you gotta practice and you gotta pass to get a multi-engine rating is a VMCA demonstration, especially if you're gonna be a multi-engine instructor pilot. VMCA, right here in the, in the uh, pilot operating handbook, is the minimum flight speed at which the airplane is directionally controllable as determined in accordance with the FAA. The airplane certifica certification conditions include one milling, one engine becoming inoperative in windmilling, a five degree bank towards the operative engine, takeoff power on the operative engine, landing gear up, flaps in the takeoff position, and the most rearward CG. Now this is for certification purposes. For some conditions of weight and altitude, stall, stalling the entire aircraft can be encountered at speeds above VMCA, as established by the certification procedure described above in which event stall speed must be regarded as the limit of effective directional control. Why is this so important? What are the two ingredients of a spin? Stall and yaw. You're setting yourself up exactly for a spin while practicing the VMCA maneuver. Here in the POH, they explain the relationship between VMCA and stall speed. Engine out Let's see, let's go on the left side of this graph. Pressure altitude increasing, indicated airspeed increasing, stall speed, this straight line right here, they're, they're saying the stall speed at a given configuration is pretty consistent despite the pressure altitude. However, VMCA will decrease with altitude. Why will VMCA decrease with altitude? Because you're in a naturally aspirated engine, you're producing less and less power as you go up higher and higher. Remember too, density altitude, 
pressure altitude, same difference. The hotter it is outside, effectively the higher altitude you are. And it's been very hot weather recently here in the uh, Sacramento area, in the whole Western United States. Engine out minimum control speed generally decreases with altitude, while the single engine stall speed remains approximately constant for normally aspirated engines. No such demonstration should be attempted when the altitude and temperature are such that the engine out minimum control speed is known or discovered to be close to the stalling speed. Loss of directional or lateral control just as a stall occurs and is potentially hazardous. So here you have VMCA well above your stall speed and then at some point VMCA decreases to that which is below your stall speed and they're saying don't do not operate in this area here so why was this aircraft in a left spin would we go out and practice these things we typically want to practice them in the worst case scenario in this case of the baron and most of these light twins you have a what's known as a critical engine and that critical engine in most of these aircraft is the left engine and what's the definition of that the critical engine, when made inoperative, has the most adverse effects on controllability. And then there's a lot of factors that that cause that to be the case, and you need to know that for your, for your multi-engine rating. So in order to avoid these sort of accidents, manufacturers have established a speed called VSSE, or Intentional One Engine Inoperative Speed. VSSE is specified by the airplane manufacturer and is the minimum speed at which to perform intentional engine cuts. Use of VSSE is intended to reduce the accident potential from loss of control after engine cuts at or near VMCA. VMCA demonstrations are necessary in training but should only be made at safe altitude above the train and with a power reduction on one engine made at or above VSSE. And it takes a little digging in the manual to find what that number is for this model of Baron. And here under practice demonstration of VMCA, we see that VSSE is 86 knots or 99 miles an hour. VMCA demonstration may be, may be required for multi-engine pilot certification. The following procedure shall be used at a safe altitude and don't go below VSSE. And then they've got the configuration. Now, whether these pilots were below VSSE or not is hard to tell. Looking at the ground speed data, it looks like they were above VSSE. But it just shows you how critical it is when practicing these engine out maneuvers in these light twins. A lot of things affect VMCA, and one of the things that will affect it are these VGs. These VGs will help lower VMCA, but the larger engines with more thrust will tend to increase VMCA. And one of the, another problem getting close to VMCA is the possibility of not only stalling the entire airplane or the wing, but the possibility of stalling the rudder, running out of rudder. And if that rudder stalls, it's off to the rodeo. With just two people on board the aircraft, you've got a nose forward CG which will tend to decrease VMCA. The point being, if you get enough factors that reduce your VMCA, you can get in this region where VMCA is below your stall speed, making recovery very difficult. But besides all the technical data, Perhaps the biggest factor is the human factor. What can upset a recovery more than anything is the improper recovery by the student or not recovering the aircraft quick enough by the instructor. I know Richard Conti is very well respected and he's the guy that can fly anything. He's also very busy. I just hope that fatigue and or complacency wasn't a factor in this accident and we'll never know thanks so much for your support of this channel especially the folks over on patreon that make this content possible see you here stay in the books